if you're serious about limiting carbon emissions, the obvious thing to do is to put a price on them or do something that, through regulation that limits carbon emissions. The notion that we're going to subsidize something else, first of all, dictates how you limit carbon emissions, and second of all, removes efficiency incentives. So the whole, the whole point of a cap-and-trade bill or a carbon tax is to limit carbon emissions. That will encourage the use of renewables, but it will encourage other things as well. So that's step one. Step two in the argument is, if you can't do that, you can't do a cap-and-trade, you can't do a carbon tax for whatever political reason, then is there an argument for subsidizing renewables to reduce CO2? Yes. Is there an argument for the kind of programs we have? No. Um, if you want to reduce cost to the nation, then you probably want a nationwide program. And the nationwide program might have an output subsidy, like a feed-in tariff or a subsidy over wholesale market rates, or it might specify a nationwide renewable portfolio standard. And you'd want it to be there in the long term so that you can build an industry to deal with it. So what we have at the federal level, first of all, is pretty low R&D support, where if you really think solar is the future, you really need to get the cost of solar down. And deployment won't do it. It won't, it won't get it down enough. So we don't do enough R&D. The federal programs are inconsistent over time. There are lots of them, but they're inconsistent. And then every state does something different. Every state but Arkansas has some kind of subsidy program. 29 states in the District of Columbia have RPS standard. They're all different. There's no interstate trading. So we have a program, we have a set of programs that are inconsistent over time and inconsistent geographically. They're good for one thing, and that's making it very hard to figure out what the whole thing costs. What they're not good at is bang for the buck. They're not good at getting you solar, uh, renewable deployment, if that's what you want, per dollar spent, either in higher electricity rates or higher tax bills. What's being said is that subsidizing the deployment of renewables is a great way to create jobs. And unfortunately, there's not an iota of evidence that that's a particularly good way to create jobs. Take windmills. Windmills in Massachusetts. We want to build windmills in Massachusetts. Well, where will they be designed? They could be designed here in Massachusetts, but we're not in that business. Where will they be made? Well, they might be made in Michigan, but I can tell you one thing, they won't be made in Massachusetts. We don't bend metal in Massachusetts. So they won't be made in Massachusetts. Who will install them? Well, you could train a Massachusetts workforce for a one-time job installing windmills, but they'll probably be put in place by people who know how to do it, who will have learned elsewhere, and who will leave when the windmills are installed. So who will take care of the windmills? Well, probably people from Massachusetts, because they live there. You're going to get a lot of jobs per dollar spent that way? It doesn't strike me as nearly as effective as, oh, say, giving money to local cities and towns so they don't have to fire teachers, so they don't have to fire police, or giving money to construction workers who are in Minis uh, Michigan or Massachusetts to repair roads and bridges. Those are jobs. Those are jobs that produce something of lasting benefit. But what's surprising is no one's made any analytical argument that subsidizing renewables is a good way of creating jobs compared to any other alternative. And no one has actually said, well, let's see, the people who are employed in that industry, is it going to employ the unemployed? Is it going to employ people who might have been doing something else? Do we know there's going to be a net increase in jobs, or do we just know that people might move to this industry from other industries? There just isn't an argument there. And by saying, guess what, people will work in this stuff and it's green, so it's great, is I think pursuing two objectives badly. I think it's important to reduce CO2 emissions. I think climate change is a serious problem. I think if the U.S. doesn't act, the world won't act. And if the, US, if the world doesn't act, we're going down a very dangerous road that will be hard to turn, turn around on.
we were having a ferocious fight off the coast of Massachusetts, uh, which has been going on for years, <clears throat> between, because there is a relatively shallow area in the ocean between Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard, the island of Martha's Vineyard, where the water is maybe 30 feet deep and the wind blows. So you can actually locate windmills relatively economically. You can put them on the bottom. And it's a pretty good wind power location, but it's also a very popular sailing area. It's visible. Uh, parts of the windmills will be visible from shore. And this is causing fights between two groups of environmentalists, the pristine ocean group and the green energy group. You're going to run into the same problems in Michigan, not too surprisingly, between those who value the pristine wilderness or tourist or areas and water recreation and those who want green energy. And both sides have points. Um, this isn't simple stuff. It strikes me as an interesting approach that you basically say, you can build whatever, whatever is built that's renewable, the local government needs to be a partner. And the local government gets a payoff, which means lower taxes for the folks in the area. So if you can structure that, then it ceases to be, or could cease to be, um, uh, the feds, the electric company, the bad guys forcing us to do something, but becomes a matter of local choice. I see no simple solution to what's going on in western Michigan or going on in the Cape. Somebody's going to lose and somebody's going to win. And it would be nice if you could find a way to share the winnings to build a coalition so it doesn't have to be rammed down people's throats. May not be possible.